one of the best racing games, if not the best racing game of the last decade. With over 150 million units sold, it's no wonder why it's at the top. But there's still one problem. We haven't received a new game really since 2014, almost seven years ago. And the one that we have received in recent time was a lackluster port. So, the question still remains. When will Nintendo release a sequel? That, ladies and gentlemen, is what we're here to answer today. Not necessarily the exact release date of the game, but what I would like to see when Mario Kart 9 does come to stores. So, without further ado, let's jump right in. First things first, the roster. Mario Kart has seen many new faces since its first installment, from Mario to the Inklings in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. And I know a lot of you will agree with me that Mario Kart is becoming more like Nintendo Kart. So I'd figured I'd add, continue that trend and add more characters. The first two characters I've decided to add were Kirby and King Diddy from the Kirby series, obviously. And this ties into my DLC packs, but I'll get to that later. As well as Kirby and DDD, I've decided to add the Octoling Boy and Octoling Girl from Splatoon 2. Just like the Inklings, they would have multiple different customization options where you can change their color. And if Mario Kart 9 is released after Splatoon 3, I'll, I'll add some of the new hairstyles as well, because they're actually pretty cool. If you haven't seen the Splatoon 3 trailer, or at least haven't seen the hair list, it's pretty dope. Now, Mario Kart isn't Mario Kart without Mario in the game, so I decided to add every single character from every single previous game back into Mario Kart 9, excluding the arcade GPs and Mario Kart 4, of course, as then the roster would become way too long. So that means Peter Piranha is back, Funky Kong is back, Diddy Kong is back, the Paratrooper from Double Dash is back, Donkey Kong Jr. is back, Wiggler is back, Honey Queen is back, Rob is back, and Birdo is back. Kirby, Diddy, and the Ogdolins aren't the only new faces in the Mario Kart 9 roster. Decided to add Dixie Kong, Cat Toad, Cat Mario, Peach Chat, Toad Color Variants because I'm tired of playing as regular Toad, Magic Koopa, after many years, he is here, Fire, Ice, and Boomerang Bros, Pauline, Wedding Mario, Bubbling Peach, Propeller Luigi, and Gooigi. Repair of Luigi ties into my DLC packs, like I said, I'll get to that later. As well as these new faces, I've decided to add a feature in the character selection menu, where when you click on a character's name, it brings up a sub-menu with every character that has that name in it. So say for example you want to play as Metal Mario. You click on Mario and it shows every single Mario variant that's in Mario Kart 9. It makes it more organized and a lot easier to find the exact character that you're looking for. I've decided to make the CC classes and game modes its own section, largely due to the fact that it's kind of complicated. Obviously, we've got 50 CC to 200 CC, but I've decided to throw in a little thing of my own. Now, you can race every single track in reverse. That was supposed to be featured in Double Dash, and a feature that they have in Mario Kart Tour, which I actually really enjoy. That's where I got the idea from. Simply select reverse mode from the mode selection screen, and then it will bring you to another menu that asks if you'd like to play in 150cc or 200cc. As well as the new reverse mode, I've also added double cart mode, for everybody who loves double dash. I debated whether or not to make a double cart reverse mode, I finally decided against it because it'd make it a little bit too crazy. Now obviously, you have to have special carts for double cart mode. So that means that most of the carts from Double Dash will be back, obviously in HD, but maybe some newly designed ones just to, you know, give the game some more originality. We've finally made it to the cups and tracks. I've included a folder in the description with the mini-maps for every track. The reason being is I don't really have full 3D models for the tracks, so I can't really show you them in great depth. So it's just kind of there for convenience. 
before we jump into the tracks for every cup, I'll briefly explain each one, uh, just so you guys have an idea of what the tracks look like, because like I said, I can't show you them, and I can't take too long to explain them, because otherwise this video might be an hour long. So starting things off with the Mushroom Cup. The four tracks are Funky Circuit, Acorn Plains, Pipe Jungle, and the Bomb Battlefield. Funky Circuit is themed off of Funky Kong, obviously, and there's a giant Funky Kong statue in the center, which looks great. Um, Acorn Plains is based on the first map area in New Super Mario Bros. U. Pipe Jungle is a jungle track that takes you through a giant pipe in an underwater section. And Bob on Battlefield is, well, Bob on Battlefield. The Flower Cup has Mario Circuit, Waluigi World, Scare Point Manor, and Toadette Mountain. Mario Circuit scenery is close to Mario Kart 8 and has a few loops here and there. Waluigi World is very much so based off of Waluigi Pinball, but I gave it a, an amusement park feel to it, so kind of like think Waluigi Pinball plus Wahoo World from Splatoon 2. Scarepoint Manor is a spooky track that's placed on top of a desolate mountain, and so that mountain is a mega lap track that takes you through a large mountain. The Star Cup features All Star Arena, Mushroom Pier, Delfino Plaza, and Ice Cap Point. All Star Arena takes place mostly in midair above a stadium. Mushroom Pier is a beach course inspired by Mario Kart towards Los Angeles laps. You do, however, go underwater in this track, which is kind of a reference to Dolphin Shoals which, again, in the minimap, as you might see, has little pipes that shoot air out of them for jump boosts. Delfino Plaza is Delfino Plaza from Super Mario Sunshine, and Ice Cap Point is inspired by DK Summit from Mario Kart Wii. You go through cannons at the top of a mountain and race back down the ski slope. Last but not least, the Special Cup. The four tracks in the Special Cup are New Donk Loop, Luigi's Space Station, Bowser's Castle, and Rainbow Road, of course. New Donk Loop is a three-lap loop around Super Mario Odyssey's New Donk City, featuring an epic remix of the original song. Luigi's Space Station is themed off of Mario Kart 8's Rainbow Road with that space station-y feel to it, hence the name, and has crazy loops and upside-down parts with it. Bowser's Castle has Mario Kart 8 Bowser's Castle vibes to it, with that open mountainous area that it takes place on, and then the beautiful looping inside. And finally, last but not least, Rainbow Road. This installment of Rainbow Road incorporates parts of every single previous Rainbow Road. Although it's not all retro, it obviously has to have some new parts to it to give it its own, to give it its own feeling. Now, the retro tracks I've chosen aren't necessarily the most popular. I've decided to go with retro tracks that have yet to be remade. Obviously as well, including the occasional one that I felt definitely deserved another remake. The retro tracks are mostly tracks that haven't been remade yet. I wanted to do this to give these ancient tracks an epic HD remake. There were three tracks from each of the previous games because math is wonderful. The Shell Cup, N64 Koopa Trooper Beach, DS Mario Circuit, GBA Yoshi Desert, and GCN Mushroom City. The Banana Cup features 3DS Wario Shipyard, SNES Ghost Valley 1, DS Delfino Square, and GCN Wario Coliseum. Leaf Cup, Wii Moonview Highway, N64 Sherbet Land, Wii U Toad Harbor, and 3DS Mako Woohoo. And the Lightning Cup has N64 Wario Stadium, Wii U Big Blue, Wii Daisy Circuit, and 3DS Rainbow Road. I figured I was doing justice to the Mario Kart series by having another epic Rainbow Road take the place as the last track in the Lightning Cup. Of course, like most modern Nintendo games, there's got to be DLC cups. I've got two DLC packs, like I mentioned earlier, that feature their own unique tracks and their new characters. The four cups throughout the two DLC packs are the Kirby Cup, the Repeller Cup, the Octo Cup, and the Cherry Cup. Each of the DLC cups has two Retro Tracks and two Nitro Tracks. The Kirby Cup has GBA Sunset Wilds, a track themed on the most iconic Kirby level, Green Greens, DS Rainbow Road, and Kitty Playground. I was like running out of ideas, so Kitty Playground just come up and it's it's got like the Bowser's Fury Cats 
and yeah, that, that's that's really it. The Propeller Cup has Aurora Airway, Wii DK Summit, SNES Bowser Castle 2, and Gusty Gardens. Aurora Airway takes place in the Arctic above the ice, just like at the North Pole with the Northern Lights. And obviously, Gusty Gardens is based off of Gusty Garden Galaxy. The Octo Cups tracks are SNES Mario Circuit 4, Mountainside Pass, a track themed off of DK Pass from Mario Kart DS, Octo Outpost, which is kind of like the way the Octo expansion works. You start in the underground subway, but then when you drive through the tunnel, it takes you like through a section that looks kind of like all the levels throughout the Octo expansion, so I thought that'd be kind of cool for it, although I don't think the name is very fitting. And to finish off the Octo Cup, Wii U Mount Wario. And the Cherry Cup tracks are Double Cherry Grotto, GBA Sky Garden, Sunshine Prairie, and G San Rainbow Road. Double Cherry Grotto is themed around the Double Cherry from Super Mario 3D World, takes you through, like, some caves, and there are trees that have Double Cherries all over them. And Sunshine Prairie is a track that's based off of Mario Kart Wii's Moo Moo Meadows. It's a farmland track that takes you through a barn, it ends with an open section with Monty Moles, just like in Moomoo Meadows. The retro battle tracks weren't that hard to choose necessarily, but the original battle tracks were definitely a pain to come up with ideas. There were obviously eight battle tracks, four retro, and four nitro. The four retro tracks are GC and Pipe Plaza, a fan favorite battle track from Double Dash. Wii Funky Stadium, another fan favorite. Switch Dragon Palace, and the reason it's Switch and not Wii U's because Dragon Palace originally appeared in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe on the Nintendo Switch and not on the Wii U. And then 3DS Sherbet Lane. The four Nitro tracks are Lake Lapcap, Bomb Bomb Factory, Bowser's Lava Lair, and Pyramid Plaza. Lake Lapcap is obviously Lake Lapcap from Bowser's Fury. I think the whole like may have to be redesigned to fit Mario Kart's frantic battle mode, and you would have to obviously rescale it and redesign it just to fit it better. Bomb on Factory would be similar to King the Bomb's Powder Keg Mine from Super Mario Party, but it would be more metallic than Rocky Mine uh, to fit the factory setting. Bowser's Lava Lair would be a similar style to GC and Luigi's Mansion with the multiple floors, but then obviously you'd be like, there'd be lava everywhere, hence the name Lava Lake. And then last but not least, Pyramid Plaza is based off of Super Mario 64's Shifting Sandland. It has a huge pyramid in the center that, yes, you can drive on, as well as some outlying sand dunes and temples. Decided, just like the characters, to bring back every item in Mario Kart history, excluding the Lucky 7 and the Crazy 8, as they are irrelevant to Mario Kart 9. The item list, in alphabetical order, is as follows. Banana, Blooper, Babom, Boo, Boomerang Flower, Bowser Shell, Bullet Bill, Chain Chomp, Coin, Fake Item Box, Feather, Fire Flower, Giant Banana, Green Shell, Heart, Lightning, Mega Mushroom, Piranha Plant, Pow, Red Shell, Spiny Shell, Super Horn, Super Leaf, Star, Thunder Cloud, Triple Bananas, Triple Greens, Triple Mushrooms, Triple Reds, and the Yoshi Slash Birdo Egg. There are also some new items that I've decided to add. The Super Acorn, which launches you into the sky with a big gust of air and then makes you glide. The Super 9, which is like the Lucky 7 and Crazy 8, but obviously with 9 items, and that ninth item is the fake item box. I didn't know where to put this, but like every new Mario Kart title, they've added something new to spice up the gameplay. Mario Kart we added bikes, 7 added customization and gliders, and 8 added anti-gravity. I decided to add triple roulette boxes, I know that's not like, huge in terms of track design, but I thought it'd be fitting because I really like the idea of having triple item boxes just like Mario Kart Tour. Obviously, there's a rare chance that you can actually get that, and then you can stack up to three items, and then of course there's still single and double items. But then unlike Mario Kart Tour, there's no frenzy mode, because I don't really know how that works. So yeah. 
Now, the bikes and carts isn't going to be a terribly long section where I list every single bike and cart that I'm going to have in the game. It's just so I can tell you the ones that I'm bringing back from older titles. So first, the bikes, the Flame Runner, the Dolphin Dasher, the Mock Bike, the Jet Bubble, and the Bull Bike are all returning from Mario Kart Wii. For carts, the Royale, the Wildlife, the Dry Bomber, the Zipper, and the ROB LGS are all from Mario Kart DS are returning. The Wild Wing, the Honeycoop, the Flame Flyer, and the Mini Beast, iconic carts from Mario Kart Wii. The Bubble V, the B Dasher, and the Barrel Train from Mario Kart 7. And then obviously most of the carts and bikes from Mario Kart 8. Just to fill in all those other spots as well as some new ones. Well guys, I think that's just about it for my full wish list. If you guys have your own ideas, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. I hope you enjoyed my ideas for Mario Kart 9. If you did, leave a like on this video. It really helps out. I really wanted to get this video out before E3 this summer, so a lot of design elements that I was working on ultimately got scrapped due to time constraints. Otherwise, I hope you all enjoyed my wishlist, and until next time, peace. Mm -hmm.